So in this video, we're going to talk about the magnitude of the cross product. <clears throat> so we're looking at uh, vectors u and v, and uh, theta is the angle in between them. So we know that the cross of u and v, that magnitude, is equal to the dot product of u and v multiplied by the sine of theta. All right. Uh, we also know that cosine of theta is equal to the dot of u and v divided by the product of the the magnitude of u and v, um, well, magnitude of u and v product. All right, so that gives us inverse cosine uh, leading to the angle itself. All right, so that's the short version anyway. All right, we talked a little bit about this in class, but this is the um, this is the extension of that. All right, so <clears throat> what we can do is we can take the the magnitude of the cross product of u and v. Undo. And let that be equal to u dot v dot the sine. Instead of theta, I'm going to pop in this inverse cosine. So let me just get the uh, closed parens in there before I forget. And so what we have is an inverse cosine. But then once that once we take that inverse cosine, we can find the sine of that, which would give us um, <clears throat> the ratio itself. So what I can do is go back to good old uh, trigonometry. This is my angle theta. All right, so if that whole thing is my angle theta, then I know that the inf information contained within that expression has to represent a ratio. So I'm going to create a right a poor quality right triangle. Uh, let me try to do that a little better. Eh, can live with it. Can't live with that. All right, so I know that my adjacent and my hypotenuse <clears throat> would be theta u dot v and the magnitudes multiplied. Right, so then if I want to find the sign, I would need that opposite side. So I would use Pythagorean theorem. Now, because u dot v is a scalar and magnitudes themselves are scalars, we can actually label a triangle with this information, which is good news. Otherwise, all bets are off. All right, so it's going to be the product of u v's magnitude. squared minus u dot v. Squared. All right, so then we get the sine of theta would be the opposite side. I'm going to use my uh, snipping tool for lack of a better term. Divided by my hypotenuse, I'll just write that in. <clears throat> All right, and so that gives us a new ratio for the sine function. All right, now if we pop this into the magnitude, and again, snipping tool, if I can find it. Get 
Get a nice little cancellation. And we get a new relationship. All right, now it's it's a little weird, but it's it's going to play out logically in a sec. All right, so we're going to have the cross of U and B. is equal to, and I'm just rewriting. All right, so based on the properties that we know, I can write this, well, I don't want to just limit it to vector properties. We, we know properties of just basic mathematics. We can write this as u squared v squared magnitudes minus u dot v squared. And so what we end up with is a new rule that we can use in order to find the magnitude of the cross product that does not involve trig at all. All right, so the magnitude of the cross product of u and v would be equal to the square root of u squared, magnitude u squared, magnitude of v squared multiplied minus the dot of u and v squared. All right, now if we clean this up, well, I don't know about cleaning it up, but if we change the orientation somewhat, we get u cross v's magnitude would be equal to, squared, would be equal to u squared v squared minus u dot v squared. All right, and if we clean it up or change things around a little bit, you know, we can, we can, we can get different variations of it is really what I'm getting at. So we could get, if I add the dot product of u and v squared to both sides, get this relationship. All right, another thing I could do would be to solve for the dot product squared. In which case I would subtract the, the the magnitude u squared v squared from both sides, but then I'd have to negate. Right? So that would actually become my positive. With the cross product being my negative. Alright. So lots of different variations of this one idea but it all comes down to this relationship well that's not true it all comes down to this relationship right back in the beginning u cross v equals u magnitude u times magnitude of v times the sine of theta but using a little bit of trigonometry we can come up with a with a brand new relationship well so using trigonometry to not have to use trigonometry anymore that's what generalization does. All right, so that's the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed.